Number one says a local office supply store charges $18 to set up their business card um, printing machine and then 15 cents in materials per business card. And when you read the word um, per something, that generally means there's a variable with that. So 15 cents per business card to print. And then the other one is just a setup fee. So a one-time fee that doesn't matter how many um, cards you make. You just pay the $18 um, and you're done. So this says select all equations that could represent the um, expression for the average cost. So per business card. So average cost, if we just kind of set this up on our own, is going to be... Um, so if we think about the cost and then we're going to divide by the number of business cards. So the cost is going to be $18 for the setup fee. And then it's going to be 15 cents per business card that I'm calling X. So this is the total cost for the business cards. So then the average cost per card, we would divide by the number of cards that we made. So this is um, our average cost equation. So we can see... Um, in part A, that that would not be true. Part B is the exact equation that I wrote, so that one's good. Um, part C puts the variable with the 18, not with the 15 cents, so that's wrong. Part D um, has the 18 on the bottom, that's bad. Part E um, divides by 18 plus the business cards, okay, so that's wrong. And then part F um, looks like it's manipulated the equation. So let's make sure um, we decide if this is equivalent or not. So in this case, we could do 18 divided by X, which is what they have. And then plus we would do this 15 cents per card divided by X, in which case these X's divide out to 1. So we just get 18 divided by X plus 15 cents. And so this would be a an equivalent equation as well. Number two, a school band is in charge of a new set of uniforms made with a new logo. A local business charges $140 to set up the logo with the design and then 25 cents in materials per logo printed. This function represents the average cost per logo if X uniforms are printed. So they've written the equation for you. So what is the average cost per uniform to get the logo printed on 25 uniforms? So for this one, we're going to do the cost of 25 uniforms. So we would do 140 um, plus 0.25 times 25 and then divided by 25. So you'll plug 25 in. Um, for each of those X's. So then on the top here, you're going to get 140 plus 625 and then divided by 25. And when you simplify that all out in your calculator, the average cost of 25 logos is $5.85. Um, B, what is the average cost per uniform to get 100 logos printed? So now we'll do um, plug in 100. So we'd have 140 plus 0 0.25 times 100 and then divided by 100 to get the average. So on top, that's going to be 140 um, plus 25 divided by 100. So the average cost of 100 uniforms is going to be one dollar and 65 cents so you can see that the average cost went significantly down when we increased the number of logos we're doing um so what would it be um how many uniforms should be printed to have an average cost of one dollar so this means that we're going to plug in our average cost needs to be a dollar so we don't know how many uniforms this is yet so we're going to leave the x's in here and solve for x so we'll just multiply X to both sides. So then we get X equals 140 plus 0.25X. 
So we can get our x's together by subtracting 0.25x to both sides. So 1x minus 0.25 is 0.75x equals 140. So divide by 0.75. And you get um, about 187. So we need to print about 187 logos for, or uniforms for the shirt to cost $1 per uniform. Um, and then what will happen to the price as the number of uniforms printed increases? And so as, um, so we're saying what's happening to this cost and now it's going down to a dollar. So if we take a look at um, this equation, that's really talking about the end behavior. So if I take 140 divided by X, plus I take the 0.25 X divided by X, those X's will cancel. So the end behavior here, as we make more and more shirts, is going towards 25 cents. So it's getting, as we make more and more shirts, this $140 setup fee kind of gets absorbed and so your cost um, gets smaller and smaller um, and closer to, um, and ultimately closer to 25 cents per uniform. Number three, two competing sports equipment suppliers sell footballs at different prices. Supplier A charges $85 in shipping and then charges $2.59 um, per football. Supplier B charges um, $50 shipping and then $4.29 per football. So a school wants to buy 40 balls, which supplier has the lowest average cost? So if we take a look here um, at supplier, oops, at supplier A. So average cost need, means we need to figure out. So for supplier A, we need to take the $85 shipping plus um, $259 per football for 40 footballs. And then that's the cost of all the footballs. Then we divide by the number of footballs that we have. So if we figure out um, the top 85 plus um, 259 times 40, we get that this is 188.6. And then we're going to divide by 40 to figure out how much each football costs. So 188.6 divided by 40 would give us um, 471. Um, so $4.71. Then for supplier B, we can do this same thing. So this is $50 shipping, but then the price per football increases to $4.29 per football. And remember, we're buying 40. So then we'll take the total cost divided by 40. So the total cost for supplier B is 264.5. And then we'll divide by 40. Well, that's going to be higher because the total cost was more. So 188 divided by 40 is going to be less than 264.5 divided by 40. Um, so supplier A would be the answer here. Number four, what is one point of intersection between these graphs? So you can plug all of these in and just see if they equal in both sides. So f of 0 would need to be 6 and g of 0 would need to be 6. So you can certainly do that. You can also um, solve it. So whatever you prefer. So let me just show you um, how you would plug in. So f of 0, you would go in here and put zeros for the x's. So 0 plus 6 is 6. 0 plus 2 is 2. So f of 0 equals 12, so this point is not on the f function, okay? So you'd have to plug it in and get back the correct y value, and you'd have to do that in both. Um, and it would have to be part of both functions. So you could keep doing that. Um, otherwise, the way that you solve this 
um, intersection means that it's where f of x equals g of x. So you can do x plus 6 times x plus 2, which is the f function, is equal to x plus 6, which is the g function. We see that they share a common factor, so I'm just going to subtract this whole factor over to the other side. So we have x plus 6 times x plus 2 minus the x plus 6 factor. So then after I subtract it off of this side, um, it'll be 0. So now that you see that these have a common factor, you can factor it out. So when I take this out of this term, I'm left with x plus 2. And when I take it out of this, I'm left with minus 1. So then we can simplify this um, by combining like terms. So we have plus 2 and minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. And then we've got two factors that equal 0. So we would set these equal to 0 to solve. So x plus 6 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0 are going to be where these graphs intersect. So we'll subtract 6 from both sides and then we'll subtract 1. So these are the x values where our graph intersects. So that's what we want to look here for is, the x, is one of those x values um, in this front column here. And so we see that um, we have x equals negative 1 here in b. So then that one would work. They don't cross at negative 2. They don't cross at negative 4. So just b. Number five, the graph of the polynomial f of x has these x-intercepts at negative 4, positive 3 fifths, and 6. So what's the value of a? So remember, x-intercepts are where each of these are equal to 0, so where each of the factors equals 0. So we add 3 to both sides here, divide by 5, and we get that positive 3 fifths factor. Okay, so this one's taken care of. For the x plus 4 equals 0, we would subtract 4 from both sides, and we get negative 4 as an x-intercept. So that means that this one right here, x plus a equals 0, needs to give us positive 6. So in order to bring this over for it to be positive 6, um, this would have to be minus 6. So then a would be negative 6. And then number six, the function f of x equals 3x minus 4 over x plus 6 can be rewritten like this. What is the end behavior? So remember the end behavior is in front of this remainder portion because as x gets really, really large, so if you plug like a million in here, you'd have negative 22 divided by a million and that's practically zero. So at very large values of x, this graph is going to be approaching 3. Um, so as x approaches, so as x gets larger and larger in either the positive or negative direction, so larger positive or larger negative, the graph or f of x um, approaches 3.